the Blue Beetle trailer dropped this week and it's been making the rounds. No, not that one. Some people love it, some people hate it, but for the most part, I think the trailer was generally well received. I don't think most people go into a trailer hoping to hate it, but with how things have been going for the DCEU lately, it's not hard to see why people wouldn't be optimistic about this. The DCEU is set to change and Blue Beetle is at the forefront of that change, technically. Being the beginning of the DCU, it has a little bit of extra weight on its shoulders to do well. Now, admittedly, when I first saw the trailer, I didn't really like it. Oh, I thought yeah, some I of the CGI was wonky, which is not uncommon for a first trailer, and it just looked a bit generic to me. You know, good guy gets in possession of something a big corporation wants, and that thing clings to him, the corporation goes after him, action ensues. I also saw that instead of being set in El Paso, Texas, they switched it up to a tropical fictitious city called Palmera, which I know Angel Manuel Soto was probably like, yo, let's have Blue Beetle, but in Puerto Rico, okay? And I'm like, bruh, let us Texas mofos have this one, okay? Blue Beetle is legit one of the only superheroes not in fucking New York or the West Coast, okay? At this point, I'll take a superhero from Ohio. <laughs> Sussy gussy. Maybe not Ohio. But after a couple rewatches and some pouring into the lore, I have to admit, the trailer has grown on me, okay? I don't know if they tweaked the trailer or what, but upon rewatch, the CGI looked a little bit better to me. And as I read more Jaime Reyes Blue Beetle books, certain things started to click and I was able to pick up on things. And now I can't stop playing Little Uzi Verts. I just want to rock. But I'm still very worried for the movie, especially because of when it was made. And I'll get into that, what I thought of the trailer and the things I picked up on and I'm excited for. But before I do, if you want to support your boy, make sure to hit the sub button, leave a thumbs up, share this video, retweet it, whatever. Guys, I'm very excited to talk about Jaime Reyes, not only a dope character, but a Texan and a Mexican American legend. And just knowing the fact that I am your guy's personal favorite Latino comic content creator, your second favorite, your third, fourth, First off, I like the little fake out in the beginning with him being all Mr. Worldwide just to end up being a cleaner. Again, I was admittedly a bit salty about the change from El Paso to Palmera, but the director, Angel Manuel Soto, explained it in a pretty fair way, okay? He thought Jaime Reyes, much like Batman or Superman, both having fictional cities that, you know, occupy Metropolis and Gotham, that Jaime was a good enough character to have his own city, which I actually like that for the DCU. Big fictional cities for our heroes is dope. It actually adds the escape. Escapism. And I believe the city was first introduced in the new Blue Beetle graduation run from late last year till now, which I had a chance to catch up on. And I'm pretty sure the movie is going to take heavy inspiration from. I mean, they outright promote the comics in the end, which I'm not giving James Gunn all the credit here because I saw this first with Matt Reeves, the Batman. I love that they're doing that now. That's the perfect way to promote the comics. Okay. Kevin Feige, take notes, buddy. But that run has been pretty good so far. Very good coloring, very good art, highly recommended read, especially Especially if you want to get ready for this movie in particular. We see Jaime entering the Cord Tower all fancied up trying to get his family some work. This is how he gets in contact with the Scarab with that lady that tells him to dip out with it. Then we see it attach itself to him in a very horrific way much like in the comic and the Scarab attaches itself to Jaime's spine, burns off his clothes and forms armor around him before taking him to the damn atmosphere. Also it did knock George Lopez on his ass which was pretty crazy, pretty funny. I personally love George Lopez growing up. The George Lopez show was something I always watch but now with all the shit coming out about him having been just a fucking asshole all these years other latino comics what happened with him and ralph barbosa which has since been squashed though i have a very love hate relationship with this man and i think and that's the same for many other latinos especially right now but we'll see how he does as the drunk deal i just feel like this is an iron man reference here guys which is nice to see as he falls back to earth and he catches himself with his wings and then soon after he splits a bus in half i think the HUD is kind of ugly, but I get it's supposed to have like a bug-like theme to it, so it makes sense. Basically, for y'all that aren't so aware of Blue Beetle or Jaime Reyes or the lore, the Scarab is what is giving Jaime the power, of course, but to put it simply, it's a device made by an alien race called the Reach, who sent these to planets to attach itself to a host that'll then get the planet prepared to get conquered by them, but because of exposure to magic, the Scarab has been able to defect and resist the Reach's control and programming, and now, for the most part, it obeys Jaime and Jaime's first appearance was I believe in Infinite Crisis or Final Crisis in like 2005 and issue number three okay this is where he actually picks up the Scarab and what I'd also recommend is the 2006 run of Blue Beetle this is you 
you know, basically Jaime Reyes' first run. It's a pretty good run. I was able to read about half of it. I got up to like issue 16 of like 36. Very good run, especially if you want to get to know who Jaime Reyes was, especially in El Paso, Texas. Pretty fun stories. When you think of Blue Beetle guys, think like Iron Man mixed with Venom, okay? The Scarab talks to Jaime, gives him strength, speed, flight, crazy electric powers, and forms blades and other things like we saw at the end there, which come on. Give me a big anime sword. I'm hype. It can also, I believe, fight against magic, which is just dope, okay? Magic is oftentimes way too OP, so I really fuck with anything that can fight against magic. It's like an alien insect tech symbiote Iron Man suit, basically, okay? Now, the antagonists are revealed soon after to be Victoria Cord, the sister of the second and probably most notable Blue Beetle, Ted Cord. And what Google says, Raul Trujillo is playing Conrad Carapax, okay? Basically, from what I've read, Ironmonger for DC. More inspiration from another universe starting movie. We all also see the suits of the previous two Blue Beetles, Dan Garrett and Ted Kord. Dan Garrett was the first Blue Beetle. He actually had powers, but never the armor like Jaime got. And Ted got completely friend zone cucked by the Beetle with no powers, but supposedly had made up for it by being just absolutely brilliant. Again, I don't think they're reinventing the wheel here. It seems like a story that's been told before, but they don't really need to do that, okay? All this movie has to do is be good and that'll be enough. If it's charming, not overly ridiculous, makes sense, plot and story wise is entertaining and has some kind of heart then it'll be dope and a great start to the dcu but the thing that's worrying me is that this movie was filmed from late may of 2022 to july 18th it was originally set to be a straight to hbo max movie but then got upgraded to a theatrical release the only other movie i know that had a similar origin was batgirl and although i love me some leslie grace thing. and the phrase that movie was said to be pure ass that coupled with angel manuel soto being not inexperienced shit john Watts had a similar resume before he directed one of my favorite movies of all time in Spider-Man Homecoming, but with not that big of a catalog, it can be kind of difficult to gauge, you know, what he does, and it brings some nervousness to what we're about to see, or at least to me, admittedly. I did hear good things about Charm City Kings, a movie that he directed a while back, but going back to the filming, that's still prior to any announcement of the DCU. That movie was still filmed in a DCEU world. Shit, I love the first Aquaman, but the sequel is next after Blue Beetle, and I'm worried like hell for that one. Okay, I don't know if James Gunn has been able to get his hands on these films or have any say on the editing, but one thing that is kind of comforting is what he said about the movie, which is that it was warm, funny, and a wonderful film. So that's not exactly one of the greatest superhero films of all time, like he said with The Flash, but that's also not his response for Shazam, which was, I loved it. It was an absolute blast. That was a straight up deflection. There are movies in the DCU that I do think are good, obviously, and I know technically we're in the DCU, but real shit, the DCU starts with Superman Legacy, to be frank, okay? That's just real shit. That'll be the first fully DCU film project from start to finish. So with Blue Beetle still having remnants of the DCU in it, it's worrying to me, honestly. Plus, besides all of that, it was written by Garrett Dunneth Alcocer, the same man who will be writing the film of legend El Muerto. Don't they got any other Latino writers? Come on. To be fair, I can't really judge this guy as he doesn't have too much stuff out yet, but if Sony is willing to hire him for a live action Spider-Man adjacent movie, that doesn't make me feel too confident okay i'm hoping for the best though i think cholo is amazing and is super charismatic i love that dude since i saw him in cobra kai back when it was still a youtube original he's honestly perfect for the role of jaime reyes and i wish him nothing but the best with this character and film overall it's a truly mixed bag but i hope we get something good in august so another great character can be seen hopefully one day with the justice league in a glorious and robust dc universe but that's pretty much it players let me know what you thought of the trailer and your thoughts on the movie movie? Are you excited? Are you worried about the movie? Do you want this movie to succeed? Or are you just super indifferent? Because who the fuck cares about Blue Beetle? Let me know. That's pretty much it. If you liked the video, leave me a thumbs up, comment down below. And if you want to subscribe, I always appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope all you guys are well, and I'll see you in the next one.